What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. Today I'm very excited to announce that we are going to be relaunching our League of Legends Moments channel with some new, fresh, and exciting content. We took a break from posting League content from this channel to explore other games for a little bit, but we've decided we want to stick to League of Legends on this channel for the long-term future. Check it out and subscribe at the link in the description. We'll be doing videos of the best League of Legends moments, highlights, and clips from the community, and even a couple new topics that are definitely going to be really exciting. We'll be bringing our moment style of content back to League of Legends and making tons of videos for you guys. Of course, I understand that not all of you are going to be interested in this, which is exactly why why we're doing it on an entirely separate channel. If you want to check it out, you can subscribe at the link in the description. What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. Welcome to today's episode of What Could Have Been. Today we're focusing on League of Legends' latest champion, Pike. As usual, we'll be taking a look at the development and release of Pike, and the decisions that Ryde made along the way, and looking at how they ended up with the final product and what could have potentially been different. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like on it or let us know in the comment section below and be sure to subscribe for some more videos. So our first bit of insight into the creation of Pike comes from comments made by Riot Reeve 3. Most supports made so far kind of follow the same typical pattern, which has led to a lack of darker characters in the support role. Reeve 3 talked about this a little bit, explaining that Riot knew they wanted to make a new support champion, but they really wanted to explore a more malicious, evil type character. It had been done a little bit with Thresh, with his theme as this sadistic reaper, but Riot really wanted to go with something a little bit more murderous. They noted that this wasn't really designed to appeal to existing support players, instead they were actually going to be trying to reach a new audience. That could mean new players who are interested in playing a more evil, aggressive support champion, or it could mean existing players that generally avoid playing support because they don't really feel a connection with the current support roster. Riot's ideas for this evil support were pretty varied, including an undead Yordle from the Shadow Isles, a Sand Wraith from Shirima, which you guys might actually know ended up becoming a skin for Pike instead. To go along with their darker thematic, Riot wanted to incorporate a new approach to the support role that hadn't really been done before. Thresh is known as a playmaking support thanks to his heavy crowd control and ability to drag teammates into a fight, but Riot really wanted to explore the idea of a support champion who would force enemies to drown personally instead of trying to save drowning allies. There was really only one way to do this, and that was to create an assassin support. League players had been requesting one for years, although no one really expected much to come of it given the obvious issues that would arise from a high damage support champion. Still, Riot had a direction in mind and it was time to see if it was even possible. And they started their approach for this champion with figuring out the right appearance. A lot of horror movies like Jaws, It, Friday the 13th were kind of used as inspirations here. The video game world of course also provided a couple of interesting inspirations such as Scorpion from Mortal Kombat or Thane Cryos from Mass Effect. These all came together to make a pretty freaking looking character as you can see from the concept art. He was pretty edgy from the start. One quite notable feature in the concept art that was left off of the finished version was a cape made of fishing nets that he would drag on the floor behind him. One of the earliest gameplay concepts for Pike was that one of his crowd control abilities would entangle enemies in the net. These versions of Pike were also quite a bit bulkier than the slimmed down version we know today, which makes sense given that Riot wanted to explore the assassin concept for a support, and assassins tend to be a lot more sleek and agile. With the appearance mostly locked down, it's time to start thinking about gameplay. Riot knew early on that to make the assassin support gameplay viable, there needed to be strong attack damage incentives that weren't just about gaining more raw damage. Riot Endless Pillows, who was the lead designer on the project, explained that during development they tried a lot of different things to make attack damage more interesting for a support champion. For example, they tried designing a few passives that would allow Pike to start with an attack damage item. Some of these included giving cooldown reduction beyond the baseline cap, or giving additional crowd control duration as you stack more damage. These passives came with clear drawbacks that were quite unhealthy from a design standpoint, which is what eventually led the team to come up with the idea of health being converted to AD instead. This allowed him to start the game with a relic shield, which not only gave him similar benefits to those previous attempts at a passive, but it also gave him access to a high value support item without actually sacrificing any attack damage too. 
Riot also decided to add some AD-based movement speed scaling to his W, which definitely helped incentivize the players to pick up some extra AD items. But it wasn't so dominant that you would feel like you needed to pick up an AD item in every item slot. And this would go a long way when it came to ensuring that Pike wouldn't become too oppressive in other roles, and it kept his options open in terms of item diversity. Another thing that Riot were keeping in mind was the need for counterplay options. This is something that they had learned was really important during the Assassin update. Opponents need a chance to actually play when they're getting dived in on. If they had gone ahead and left Pike with his stealth and two hard CC abilities without any counterplay, he'd be a seriously broken champion. So to solve this, they made sure that enemies would be warned beforehand so that they had a chance to dodge his spells, even if they were used while he was in stealth. The last big focus for development was appealing to a wider range of players, specifically the assassin player demographic. Every other role can play an assassin in some capacity, so Riot really wanted to bring that aspect to the support role too. Pike would still be focused a bit on crowd controlling enemies since, after all, he is a support, but Riot were aiming to appeal to that assassin player demographic by making him more damage heavy with a high risk, high reward playstyle. Now an immediate issue to be tackled when it came to Pike's gameplay was that a support generally can't really be the one racking up a bunch of kills. You pretty much always want that gold on other carry champions if possible so that they can afford their own expensive items. Which led to Riot coming up with the concept for a gold sharing ability, which was originally granted automatically to whichever ally was the last to help with a kill. At the start, Riot used pretty loud audio and visual effects to make it noticeable for allies, but they still felt like it went unappreciated and kind of unnoticed, especially in big messy team fights. As a result, Riot changed the Your Cut mechanic by turning it into a consumable. This gave it a really cool thematic that tied it into Pike's narrative, but also made sure that the ally who received the bonus gold actually was realizing that it happened and wouldn't just get pissed off that their support stole their kill. The mechanic became a lot more noticeable and interactive this way, which helped a ton with people getting over the idea of their support champion taking some of their kills. Now the rest of Pike's gameplay required a lot more iteration. Riot definitely knew that his development was not going to be easy. Balancing between assassin and a support is a pretty tricky procedure considering they are usually polar opposites in terms of gameplay. This led him to have a lot of really cool scrapped abilities that were mostly aimed at building team play rather than having Pike as a roaming one-man army. For example, rather than his current camouflage ability that can basically be used anywhere, during development Pike had permanent invisibility that would only trigger when he had an ally in vision range and wasn't in combat. This would encourage players to lurk around their teammates ready to support, but it wouldn't play as well with his gray health mechanic and made him a little bit too dependent on his teammates for his gameplay. At one point, he also had his own Zed Deathmark style mechanic, except the damage would only work on his team's damage. But again, this forced him to rely on teammates rather than actually being able to make plays by himself. One of the more interesting scrapped crowd control abilities was a dash that would essentially exhaust an enemy that he hit with it. It could also hit multiple enemies, and if he hit two or more, the cooldown would fully reset. Riot always knew that Pike would have to be mobile as an assassin, but exhaust is actually even more annoying to deal with than a short term stun, and this was probably removed due to just being crazy overpowered in teamfights. An assassin excels at isolating and destroying single targets after all, and this ability seems a lot more ideal for a mobile traditional support champion rather than one that's trying to be an assassin. This was also an issue with one of Pike's original ultimate abilities, which would do an area of effect spike that provided him with a shield, and when he was fully stacked, he could teleport a small distance and flip enemies behind him. Although the core idea was making him feel like more of a utility based assassin, most players don't really associate utility gameplay with assassins whatsoever. He ended up feeling a lot more like just a mobile support champion. Riot Hyarta actually provided some development gameplay of this particular ability where you can see Pike toying with enemies between his towers. You can definitely get a very support-esque feel thanks to the choice of crowd control, but Pike is almost entirely reliant on the towers here to deal his damage. The assassin support fantasy really depended on Pike being able to put out an assassin's level of damage, which meant they needed to change their fundamental approach to his abilities. 
Now the next scrapped ability from Pike's development that I wanted to show you guys was another variation that was on his ultimate, which was a kidnap spell where you would place a marker down on the ground and then reactivate it within a window to dash forward, but then teleport back to the marker. If you hit an enemy with the dash, they would actually be brought back with you. Now this was another utility and team play focused design with the idea that you'd help your teammates get the same amount of target access as traditional assassins. Yarta shared a clip of this ability too, teleporting Swain back into his ally Echo's W. Despite being a pretty functional example of an assassin or thief support, it ended up turning into a very problematic ability. Instead of being used to isolate a single target for your team to kill, the optimal use case for the ability was actually just to kidnap people into your fountain or kidnap a really fed enemy far far away from a teamfight so that your team can just win 4 vs 4. Yarta shared yet another clip of the fountain shenanigans and you can see why people definitely hated playing against it. A stealth assassin with a dash that would cause instant death or put you miles away from a teamfight is just really frustrating gameplay which is why Riot eventually decided to just give Pike his own assassination execute ability. Riot Endless Pillows explained that the whole point of Pike's thematic was to turn him into a killer. There aren't many supports that can realistically scoop up a Darius style pentakill, so it gave support players this amazing dream to aspire towards and overall a nice awesome new playstyle. It avoided all the issues of the utility based approach and the gold sharing allowed the assassin gameplay to remain viable and not conflict with your teammates for a support champion. Either way, that's just about going to wrap up today's video on what Pike could have been. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. There's a lot of really cool scrapped abilities here that actually could potentially end up on other champions in the future. There's already a huge roster of characters that Riot are still coming up with really cool ways to make gameplay interesting for. And even if those abilities didn't work out for Pike, they definitely could work out on other supports or other champions in the future. So definitely let us know your comments and thoughts on the video or Pike's development in the comments below. Love to let you know what you guys think maybe Ride should have kept or changed from his design. Either way, it looks like that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.